Welcome back to Breakaway with David and Fabian. It is August 25th, and man, Fabian, we have a lot to unpack as always. Isn't that true? Crazy news day. Let's get into Let's it. Let's do it. So RFK drops out and endorses Trump, which is historic because Kennedy is now endorsing a Republican. Telegram founder, this is a free speech under threat. Telegram founder arrested in France. SpaceX to the rescue. Boeing stuck in space <laughs> again and perhaps we'll get into the billionaire mike lynch who's dead in a boating accident and we'll explore a bunch of different conspiracy theories so fabian let's just go ahead and jump right into it i think it's pretty historic to have a kennedy endorsing donald j trump and it's not just any kennedy it's rfk jr who's been polling anywhere between seven to ten percent which is actually crazy for a third party in modern politics, yes, it is. right? So I'm sure that this is going to have some sort of impact on the polls, and I can't wait to see it, but what is your overall thought of everything? I think it was a well-to-do move. I think RFK understands that this is bigger than party. This is country. And the foundations of the country that we've known are under, literally under attack every single day, more and more. Freedom of speech, Second Amendment rights, everything is under attack right now all at once so i think he did a great service to his country by putting his partisan stuff aside and joining with someone who can actually reunite the country for what it was meant to be i definitely agree i wonder if this is going to be enough to carry trump over the finish line though is this going to make the impact that he needs to see in georgia arizona like is this going to have an impact on like the john mccain voters who have been disenfranchised by trump and even Kerry Lake in Arizona. Is this going to be enough to get him over the finish line in, in such crucial, important states? That's going to be interesting to see, but you can't lie. What I told you a couple of days ago was that um, Trump is just missing some something this time around, and it's that build the wall type slogan. Well, this time partnering up with RFK seems to not just be a historical thing, but it's something so needed in his uh, campaign right now because it's shaping a new, different kind of modern Republican party by including these not so traditional Republican take. Well, to go back to your original point, you said about the John McCain voters, there are the older voters that remember JFK and love JFK and love the Kennedys. And we're so sad when, uh, forget what his name, when he died on a plane crash. So to see a JFK joining a Republican, that sounds the, Repu the Republican Party right now sounds more like JFK's Democratic Party than the typical than the current Democrats. So it's going to be interesting to see once the polls come out how older voters are siding on this issue. But and then to go to your other point is yeah, the Democrats and the Republicans, it's almost like we're going through a party switch. Mm. It really is like we're going through another party switch right now. The Democrats have done, or sorry, the Republicans have done something very well with RFK, and now they are taking the banner on environmental issue on mental health issue all the things that the democrats don't even care about at this point because they're so inundated with getting the far left fringe that's going to turn out to vote and probably i would say like 90 percent they are taking those issues that valued that are you know most americans value especially people about the environment they're going to be conflicted do i want a democratic party that's going to you know run with these left policies or am i going to stick to my initial claim why i joined the democratic party was because of the environment yeah definitely to build up on that actually i think this will be a crazy statement but just hear me out um i think that the tim walls and kamala harris ticket is much more radical than the trump and vance ticket i think that actually trump and vance appeal much more to what moderate and middle america actually believes in than what kamala harris and tim walls do and my justification for that is pretty simple. All the stuff that the very far left believes in is exactly what Kamala Harris's and Tim Walz's ticket is appealing to. When it comes down to abortion, they don't side with what the majority of Americans believe in. The trans with the kids stuff, that's not what majority of Democrats even believe in. Um, all this various things, it's very, very radical ticket. Whereas Trump and Vance, you may not, agree with them on everything but on a lot of these social issues they're much more in the middle of it yes they and are i think that the most important thing that they can do these next 70 or so days is just 
deliver that message as much as they can because it is going to come down to just about a couple thousand votes in every battleground state i think and uh it's going to be up to these independents you know and you know the thing is yes they are more moderate than the democratic policies however the media is spinning i we were watching i forget what we were watching yesterday on spanish television every time they had a commercial break there was ad for Kamala Harris in Spanish. So they are spending ungodly amounts of money. And the mainstream is not covering Donald Trump and J.D. Vance accurately. And we know this. We know that, I, I think the figure came out, something like 96% of all mainstream media coverage on Donald Trump was negative. 96% and 84% or so was positive on Kamala Harris. So we did see cracks in the mainstream media start forming. Uh, we think the price gouging, as we were speaking about before, was a little too far. Maybe they tamed down that rhetoric and get out of talking about price controls and then move on to something else. I don't think the Republicans should let them get out of that because that's a very major misstep in policy. Uh, but will the mainstream even cover it? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, what, what I know that they'll cover is a bunch of negativity, right? And they're going to try and paint this various pictures and narratives around JF or RFK, Trump, Van, they're going to continue to do that. The funniest thing I saw was that when RFK was coming out and endorsing Trump in that Arizona rally, when I switched over to CNN, what were they doing? <clears throat> they had RFK's sibling on saying, oh, well, this is a disgrace to our family's yep. name. We all reject this. This is what CNN was doing as RFK was on yep. stage endorsing Trump and giving this historic endorsement and speech. And it just shows you how partisan CNN truly is. They're not trying to get both sides. They would wait maybe after the speech. They're not even allowing their audience, their you know, 10 or 15 people that are watching it, to make their decision for themselves. Like, okay, why is RFK endorsing? Not why his sibling is saying that this is a disgrace, but why is he endorsing? And this is what they're going to continue to do. And the one thing I forgot to say about how radical that ticket is, is that you don't see them making these historic partnerships. Look at this. Tulsi Gabbard, Elon Musk, now RFK. All former Democrats. All right. former Democrats are joining uh, in coalition together with who? Trump, Vance some of these new wave Republicans. I like calling them new wave Republicans, new wave Republicans because they don't represent the traditional Republican politics. And every time we hear, well, the Republicans are this, I'm like, yo, stop. <laughs> because Trump is not your traditional Republicans. Vance yep. isn't your rep a traditional Republican because exactly. of all these labor laws and whatnot. And they are attracting who? Disenfranchised Democrats. Key Democrats. Yeah. Yes, they are. And on top of that, RFK, I believe he said today, that they are going to start bringing other Democrats on board as well. So it's going to be interesting to see who's... I did see who, that. Yeah, who's just exhausted with these leftist policies and who's ready to jump ship, at least for this election. Now, one thing that I was thinking about, and I heard Donald Trump start saying this yesterday, and I really, really like called her. He called her Comrade Kamala. <laughs> and I think he should really hit on this communist line because if, when you have a lot of Latin voters, my parents fled communist Cuba. Your parents fled communist Soviet Union. When you have people who understand what the policies are and you start talking about communism, that's going to spark something in them because they fled that. So sure, the pretty commercials are going to work for maybe low information voters. But from the right, I think if you hammer this, these are communist policies, socialist policies. People, especially Latin people, are going to maybe say, hold on a second. Wait, she said that? This is what happened in my country. That's why I moved here. And I think that might have um, that might influence a lot of Latin voters or minority voters, especially from those countries that came there. Especially South Florida, baby. Especially <laughs> the South Cubans Florida. know what's up down Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Overwhelmingly voting Republican, of course, in that area, yep. because people who've actually experienced communism reject communism. And I know one thing that I actually heard when I was, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago was that a lot of Cubans were so scared when Obama was delivering his victory speech because they said, wow, it sounded so much like Fidel Castro, like all these promises and that'll be yep. good and everything. Uh, 
shout out to the Cubans. When they recognize that there's a problem like communism, they reject it right away. You well, why do you think I'm fighting this so hard, man? <laughs> I, I don't want to go back to my family fled. That's, uh, that's, that's not the way I want things to go. But RFK, I think he's injecting another, as we were talking about environmental issues, but he's also talking about really important stuff. Like, why is our food being poisoned? Why are so many Americans uh, experiencing cancer, especially young people, at alarming rates? So many people are experiencing uh, having children with autism. I think the rate is like one in 44 kids wow. now. That is insane. That is very high. These are all questions that we know the answer to. Fluoride, sunflower oils, safflower oils, high oleic oils, uh, and, and all these other chemicals. But no one on the right, uh, sorry, no one on the left is talking about that at all. Everything is social justice, social justice, because it hits that emotional ping. But there are tons of parents, left and right, who are experiencing cancer, autism with their kids, mental health issues. And so, talking about things like this is really going to hit a chord with them. So when you have a, ch a child that has autism and you're dealing with it every single day, that's real deep. All these, this, this new campaign slogan of joy and all these promises the Democrats are making, that really is not going to affect you on your day-to-day. -day. We always talk about this when we're debating TikTokers, uh, liberal TikTok. Well, does that really affect you in your day-to-day -day life? And they say, oh, no, but... But abortion so, is much more important. <laughs> but abortion is much more important. And I like how I've been hitting them with it lately, right? When a male is telling me that abortion is one of the most important things to them, I say, hold up, Let's pause right there. We can't talk about this anymore. He's like, why? Well, you're a male. We've been told we're not allowed to talk about this. And he's like, well, I'm in support of it, so I'm allowed to talk about it. And I'm like, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Show you go. your true colors. Why don't we talk about another thing that the left completely doesn't care about, and that is free speech, unless it pertains to them, or labeling whatever they don't agree with as hate speech, right? Yep. But um, which, 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 by the way, doesn't exist in the Constitution. Doesn't exist in the Constitution. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as hate speech. No matter what anyone tells you, they're trying to create this new thing called hate speech that does not exist. The First Amendment covers all speech as long as they don't incite to violence. And all speech means all speech. Yeah, you're right. Let's go to a part of the world where uh, free speech doesn't exist because it's not baked into any constitution, and that is Europe. Le France. Le France, especially France, where the founder of Telegram was just arrested. Now, I think that's really interesting, especially given the timing of it. And yep. the fact that there is more than 30 million conservatives in the United States that use Telegram because of yep. what happened in the 2020 election and then waking up to the fact that there's big tech censorship going after them. Um, this could actually threaten the United States possibility to even host Telegram, right? There's rumors going on about that. But Fabian, what do you think about this? This assault on freedom of speech just so close to the election? Well, we know what's happened with Twitter. X. We know how hard the other governments of the world, the European Union, has come after Elon Musk. They can't exactly do anything to him because he's so integral to so many different industries, especially here in America. He's our only right to space. I know later on we're going to talk about how Boeing's stuck in space. SpaceX, as of now, is the only vehicle that we have, aside from the Russian Soyuz, to get us to space. But Telegram was a more low-hanging fruit. Because a lot of people can say, well, you can say whatever you want on there. There's censorship, which is great. That is an example that they're making of him to say, Elon, we're going to come for you later. And we know that WhatsApp has been, I mean, WhatsApp is not private whatsoever. Facebook owns it. And there's advertisements talking about how, how safe WhatsApp is. When there's advertisement telling you about how safe it is, you know it's not safe. Especially when they're on New York Times, uh, or the uh, Times Square in New York. But... Telegram, I mean, it's really unfortunate what happened. He's facing, I hear, up 20 years in prison. Elon Musk, RFK, all these free speech absolutists are coming out in support of him because it's just absolutely ridiculous. The founder of Rumble fled. Uh, he was in Europe today and he fled. Once he was safely on the plane, he said, I left because they also threatened me and I knew what was going to happen. Now, I wonder if Elon Musk even feels uh, safe going over there. You know, because listen, they threatened him a week or two ago when they were having that interview with Donald J. Trump. 
when they were when they threatened him when they were gonna inter when he had that interview with yep. Trump, yep. right? They said, "Hey, if you break any of our speech laws here in the EU, yep. we will come You're after you." Be in trouble, Mister. You'll be in trouble, which is so crazy, but whatever. And now they're actually going after somebody. Now I wonder whether this has to deal with, and maybe you know, the fact that he's Russian, or is this because, um, you know? maybe maybe telegram somehow broke some kind of eu laws because again they don't have freedom of speech like we do here they they, they have a lot of weird rules that apparently in the president mary well let's not get into that <laughs> but uh, you check be out macron with that. just just google macron's wife and look at the picture and tell me what you think leave it in the comment here uh, let us know what you think what's going on in the situation but it's it's incredibly scary when you see a someone who owns a free spe a free speech platform be arrested, like, you know, again that free speech under attack like never been before. The elite want to remove freedom of speech because that is the only thing that allowed humans to be free and own property, and essentially, what allowed America to become America was that pesky First Amendment that the elite hate. Yeah. I actually just saw that Lex Friedman uh, tweeted in support of him, the arrest of Pavel Durov is disturbing attack on freedom of speech and the threat not just to Telegram, but to any online platform. And I think that's a key thing right there, because I think this is perhaps setting a precedent to where the government can shut down free speech yep. platforms, yep. because we're seeing this in the United States more than ever before. Everybody's starting to hate Elon Musk which is so hypocritical of the left to do because he literally does so much for the environment, which I thought was one of the main thing. These social justice warriors are social justice warriors not anymore because it's all about emotion now, not about the real reality. Yeah. The only, the only thing they care about environmentally is climate change, not saving our trees. You know, uh, they just opened these CO2 capture centers. They're opening them, them up all over the world. They're basically fake trees because trees capture CO2. But no, 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 we can't build new trees because that doesn't make anybody really any money. But investing all this money into a new technology and a new um, and a new sphere to create these machines that do the same thing that trees do is just astronomically stupid. Yeah, it, just plant more trees. I mean, why do we have to create this all these weird looking fans to capture CO2 and then cover a ton of the planet with solar panels that block the sun from hitting the ground just build more trees should just plant more trees <laughs> well they're ridiculous again and they're hypocritical because again they're supposed to love elon musk because of all the environmental friendly stuff that he does from tesla to spacex we'll talk about spacex in a second but they're suddenly hating him because he owns a platform that allows uh, freedom of speech to thrive on there there's a lot of stuff on there there's a lot of characters like nick fuentes that i disagree with but they are able to say what they want to on these uh, platforms i think they should be able to because one it's good uh that we as a society allow different of opinion to be able to flourish on on platforms um, otherwise it would be a boring society, but two, I'd much rather know who the, he what the hell Nick Fuentes is thinking. So I know, oh, he's the idiot that thinks this stuff rather than these people go to their like, uh, echo chambers and be even more radicalized and mad at the fact that nobody's listening to them and blah, blah, blah. Well, and that's exactly what Jordan Peterson, he has a very good, uh, line where he talks about, he says, diet, open conversation is open conversation is where dumb ideas go to die. Mm. If, if no one ever tells you your idea is dumb, you're going to go do that idea and you may literally, literally die, right? Like if you're going to go jump off a bridge, let's say you don't know that's a bad thing for some reason. I can tell you, hey, David, that's really stupid. You're going to die. But if I'm afraid to tell you something, I'm afraid that you're going to take offense of it. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. And then no one has any pushback on dumb ideas. And we see this happening on the left. It's all enableism, enableism, do whatever you feel, do whatever you feel. And people are literally cutting their body parts off 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 because no one's telling them hey that might be stupid you might regret it remember that tattoo you got that you don't like well imagine cutting off one of your body parts or allowing a child to cut off their body parts when they don't even know what up and down is at this point so it's really interesting to see this attack on freedom of speech it's been coming for so long it started in canada with the c16 bill back in 2017 jordan peterson was a big fighter of that and now it's spread to australia where they don't have any freedom of speech 
spread to France. Now it's in England where you can't say anything negative about the government. I mean, it's happening in every single place. America is the last bastion of freedom of speech that kind of created it with the First Amendment. And now it's under attack. So it's going to be really interesting to see where this goes. Oh, I can't wait to see. Let's switch gears to another interesting story. we got some astronomers stuck in space, right? Uh, astronaut, yeah. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Uh, astronomers. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's actually not incorrect. You know, I'm sure they are astronomers. They know the stars are astronauts. Ah, well, you know? there you go. Well, astronauts go. stuck in space, right? And from what I understand, it's uh, Boeing spaceship took them up there. It broke down, which is hilarious because we've been seeing all these Boeing planes breaking down. And now Tesla's coming for the, or not Tesla, well, Elon Musk is coming for the rescue with SpaceX. Yeah. So let me, let me kind of break it down because space is kind of a this really weird thing you know, for a lot of people. We have the International Space Station flying, flying. It's actually floating, not, not even floating. It's just in Earth's gravitational pull. And the way that we get the space station is that we shoot a rocket up and there's a capsule that docks, literally parks in a parking spot in the space station. We have a few of them. One of them is reserved for the Soyuz because the Russians go up there. And the other one is reserved for the United States. Now, in 2011, the space shuttle was retired because it was, you know, they had a lot of problems, had some disaster, astronauts die. And from 2011 until SpaceX launched their Dragon, which is their capsule that goes to space, Americans didn't have a way to get to the space station. Imagine that, the most powerful country. We were renting from the Russians. We, we were renting seats on their Soyuz spacecraft. And um, so SpaceX came into the picture. Actually, Boeing and SpaceX both got grants from the government to build this capsule that was going to benefit the United States government. Boeing got $4.2 billion, and SpaceX got $2.6 billion. Of course. And this is a big thing back then. So SpaceX finished essentially on time, and for a few years now, we've been going into space, docking with the International Space Station, taking re uh, resupply stuff, food, all these things that the astronauts need by SpaceX. Boeing was supposed to do this in 2019. Mm. So they're five years delayed <laughs> and they're over budget. So they've had mishap after mishap after mishap. And now they finally docked the space station, but their reactor control thrusters, basically these rockets, these mini rockets in the front that help it turn in space to turn around and go home, aren't really working. <laughs> so NASA got together and said, well, we don't think that it's safe enough to de-dock and take this back home with humans inside. Remember, it's an election year. Kamala Harris is ahead of the, what is something like Space Council or something like that. If something were to happen in space, I mean, number one, people would die. Number two, here is the really dangerous part. If, you're, if you undock from the space station, okay, you're not going anywhere. You're still going around the Earth, but you're not changing your, your location. You're just floating around in the same exact angle. If the space station undocked from it, the space station is also going around. So there's a potential that when it comes around, it can run into the capsule. No. That would mean destruction for all the International Space Station. There's 12 people up there right now. 12 people. Yeah, they can't risk I mean, that. Especially that we're done. Three that means we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done. Yeah. Uh... First of all, I think this is a perfect time to send in Space Force for the rescue. This yep. is what we've been building Space Force for. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't have any, any, they can't do anything about it. Unfortunately, but thank goodness we have such smart people like Elon Musk does that we have to cherish them and protect them like Elon Musk, who uh, have been able to do this on time. And from what I understand now, he's going to send SpaceX to essentially rescue them, right? Yeah, so what's interesting is that we were supposed to have uh, Crew 9 go up already, like a few weeks ago or a month, <laughs> but they can't go because the Boeing Starliner is parked in its parking spot. Boeing is just failing. Literally, they can't get up what's there because they're he like- can't fly planes, he can't fly spaceships. I don't want DEI, anything to do with it. DEI at work. DEI at work right there. Literally DEI at work. Now, space is hard and I'm not going to I'm not gonna fault Boeing or the people who yeah. work there because it is extremely hard. It's a very hard thing to do. But like you could have called Elon Musk, and said, "Hey, can you help us?" Uh, I mean, you do this better than they ever. They would never. They're they're pride. They, they wouldn't, but they should. Yeah. And now a eight day 
next day, the astronauts stuck on the space station, two people, were supposed to be there for eight days. Now they're going to be there for eight months. <laughs> eight months. Yes, baby. Well, all I can say is that instead of going with Boeing or any of these woke companies, just go with Elon Musk companies. Seems pretty straight. He's against ESGs. He's against this DEI stuff, which is good because we like merit in front of all this stuff. Now, I'm not saying that this is because of DEI or ESG, but we know that that's been a big problem with these big corporations yep. lately is that when they forget to uh, include merit as the main component of why I'm hiring an individual for a certain project or certain initiatives, then you start to have a lot of failure stuff like this happen, which is exactly what happened in Atlas Shrugged. They started to, you know, totally forget the most important things behind a corporation as yep. important as a railroad corporation. And uh, yeah, it's starting to play out in real time right now. Who's John Galt? Yep. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I like how James Lindsay, so James Lindsay, I don't know how we got on here, but he was on the Boeing earnings call. Oh, yeah. At, I believe two quarters ago. And he essentially said what they are doing is actually a disservice to the shareholders company's purpose is to make profit and be as efficient as possible this does not fit any of those two categories so there's a potential that it is illegal to push these issues so hard because you're wasting company resources on something that does not help the company grow or bring more value to the shareholder and that's a very big point and i've never heard really anyone make it the way he made it and he made it on the boeing shareholder call which is pretty incredible so Boeing has a whole host of issues. Now, here, here, here's the thing. Think if you're George Soros. You make money when things collapse. When, when you, know, you cause chaos, things collapse, like the British pound. He collapsed, shorted it, and made money off it. There's a lot of people making the assumption that George Soros has massive put positions or short positions on all these companies, and he's doing the same thing he did in England. He's causing chaos, releasing news stories about doors falling off, things like that through his intermediaries in the media companies so that the stock fall. That he makes money on the way down. And if things fix fix themselves up, then he makes money on the way up. I would the I feel like he's so much behind all of this because of course we know he has the HRC, which I what is it called? The Human Rights Campaign. The Human Rights Campaign. Right. And they have that woke meter, which yep. essentially sees how woke a company is that applies. CEI credit the score. CEI credit or score. Corporate, right. The, the corporate equality and score. Exactly. Basically, Crazy. it sees how woke a company is. And if it's woke enough, they give it a score. Yep. And then banks feel comfortable loaning to these companies because they know that the HRC, headed by George Soros, or now I guess it's Alex Soros, his son. It uh, doesn't send its activists to boycott the companies or yeah. to go on the media waves and essentially say, you know, don't go after these companies. I real life cancel culture, right? Um, so I could totally see him behind this. But the other thing is that what I wanted to mention was with Boeing. I totally remember when James Lindsay also exposed the fact that the executives just suddenly flip uh, yep. main criteria when it comes down to how they pay out bonuses. Yep, exactly. One year, it was public safety, and it was like that for years. And then all of a sudden, public safety was gone as a category. And what was the new category there? Diversity, yep. which is absolutely crazy. When they start, when an airline company, or predominantly an airline company, starts to put away public safety and at the forefront puts diversity, that should scare any customer. That should scare the society in general. Like, where are we heading when something so important where we transport millions of people, um, maybe billions uh, in total as a year, why do they suddenly abandon public safety in the name of diversity? Crazy. Well, there's one word, degrowth. <laughs> degrowth is a concept that the World Economic Forum has released. Got to be careful, um, my friend. <laughs> this, this, this is literally them. They, they say this. Um, and there's a report called UK Fires, U K F I E R S, that was made in conjunction with like uh, a bunch of universities out there in England. But degrowth essentially means that in order to help humanity, we have to degrowth. We have to rein in all of this capitalism. We have to literally shrink economies to help save the environment because we're doing too many things as humans. So all this tells me is uh, is they want to remove 
more freedom. So in this report, UK Fires, they say that app, uh, net zero is not enough. Mm. We need of absolute never zero. Enough. What the, absolute zero. Is that, is that not absolute zero? <laughs> well, in the report, they say that we have to shut down all flights except for like two or three airports, like major airports. Shut down all flights for a period of like 15 years to not get to net zero, but to absolute zero, meaning don't create any carbon emission. They literally have this, and there is a very, and a lot of companies sponsored this report. So when you're talking about Boeing failing, this is part of the plan. They want to shut down airlines. This is not conjecture. This is actually in the report. You can read it. Go to UK Fires. Uh, just look at it. It's called uh, Absolute Zero. You can Google it, pull it up. It's really crazy. Also, shutting down all shipping. It literally says shut down all shipping until 2030. Imagine that. <laughs> is absolutely insanity that would be pretty crazy but i don't put anything past the left because they don't think anything past i don't know their bedtime <laughs> well the mega corporate or rather mega corporate but the globalists and the elites they literally don't want us doing anything they want 15 minute cities said minute cities when we travel we create too much carbon uh in the air so we don't they don't want us to drive they don't want us to fly they don't want shipping they don't want i mean they want us to just to be sitting here and in their virtual world or however they allow us to live at that point. while the people that tell them to not do this stuff continue to do the very own stuff that they tell them not to do because exactly bill gates and all these people that tell them how much we need to stop eating meat or how much we need to stop flying on planes and whatnot they are the very own people that continue to fly around all these places right especially when they go to the World Economic Forum to talk about how climate change is the most existential or the biggest threat, basically, to, the, uh, to us as humans on their private planes. I got to love it. But on their private planes, I, you know, one of the best uh, videos I saw is in Davos, Switzerland, where the, U, uh, where the World Economic Forum has their yearly meeting. I forget how there was over 100 private jets. Yeah. And all these climate activists that were well, they were trolling the climate activists or they were kind of saying oh did you fly here on your on, on your private jet somebody confronted uh, greta greta thunberg uh little miss thunberg and uh was like oh did you fly in your private jet here <laughs> so if not how did you get here it's 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 just hypocrisy at its at its apex oh yeah what it oh yeah that's exactly it when they stop buying beach waterfront properties when they stop flying on planes private planes and general planes when they stop buying, you know, regular cars and whatnot, maybe, just maybe, I'll consider to think about it. <laughs> oh, one of the best videos I've seen in a long time was when they confronted Bill Gates about, mm. about this very issue. They said, you know, you're all about climate, uh, saving the climate and the world, but you flying a private jet all year long. How do you, like, what do you say about that? And he says, well, I invest tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars every year. So... I really offset it because of the good work that I'm doing. Mm. The good work that of I'm course. doing. Of course. Yeah. The good work that I'm doing. Going around the world, grifting you guys, telling you guys yep. to do this so I can actually enjoy all that stuff. Why don't we switch to another billionaire? Have you heard of Mike Lynch, Fabian? I, I've heard a little bit about him. I've never heard of Mike Lynch until a few days ago. Same. <laughs> and then suddenly all over Twitter... The media nonstop, all they're doing is just talking about this story about Mike Lynch, who's a billionaire who recently died when his super yacht sank off the coast of Sicily. And it's part of a bunch of conspiracy theories online. And the main thing I have to say, though, is that for some reason, the media is just shining so much light to this story. CNN is constantly running articles about it and really? putting it on the news. Fox News is doing this, The Guardian, New York Times. Wow, all this I didn't stuff. know that. And my thing is this, is that it resembles a lot of that. Remember that submersible um, thing, the Titan? Yep. yep. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of about that, how it involved billionaires, right? Involved this like spooky, mysterious, all of a sudden vanished story. And now people are nonstop talking about it. And it's like, okay, while people are talking about it, and we'll get into all the conspiracy theories, so don't worry. But while people are talking about it, there's been a lot of stuff happening that I feel like is not getting enough attention, like RFK endorsing Trump. Uh, Red hearing bonanza right there. Focus on this, not on what, not on the issues that it matter. Exactly. The 
breach of social security data, right? Like two plus. All of our social security numbers are out there. Gone. On the, on the dark web. Gone. Um, the House found that Biden could be, you know, impeached essentially, right? There's so mm -hmm. many things that nobody's talking about. Obviously, nobody's talking about that Kamala still doesn't have any good policies. Right. But everybody's talking about this mysterious billionaire going missing. And, and that's because when they entertain you, you focus on the entertainment and not the real world stuff. It's a lot easier to make assumptions about what happened to this guy than it is to actually read policy and look at candidates and say, who's going to make my life better? Exactly. Well, let me just outline this entire story. So um, this guy, Mike Lynch, British tech tycoon, no for founding the software company, Adam autonomy was aboard the yacht Bayesian when it was reportedly struck by a rare water spout <laughs> leading to the vessel sinking the incident occurred just hours sorry, sorry. by the way i have never even seen a water spout so if there's a rare water spout <laughs> like <laughs> how rare does it have I've, I've never seen a regular one <laughs> I see what you mean. And just off the coast or something? Probably something like that. But I've actually seen a water spout off the coast in Florida. It was crazy. But uh, the incident occurred just hours after his former co-defendant in a high-profile uh, high fraud trial died in a separate freak accident, fueling speculation about the timing of these events. So let's see. Is this a conspiracy or not? Conspiracy number one, assassination by powerful interests. One of the most widely discussed theories is that Lynch deaths would not the accident, but an assassination orchestrated by powerful interests. Prominence of this theory point to Lynch's recent legal matters, particularly his acquittal in a high-profile fraud case involving the sale of his company. Some believe that Lynch became a target due to the financial and political ramifications of the case. The theory suggests that the water spout that sank his yacht was either artificially created or used as a cover. To, for the attack, possibly involving advanced technology or sabotage. Conspiracy or true? Well, I think knowing what I know about the case, it could be either or. I mean, I mean, but look, weather how many modification times system used by, I don't know, <laughs> like, yeah, like or, not the or, government? Or the whole water spell thing could be just a, another red herring to throw people off. Mm. You no, know, and it could have been straight sabotage, just like when the Boeing whistleblowers, whistleblowers, multiple of them somehow died. That was waiting. really strange, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like really one after another. You know, yeah. it's bad when it becomes a meme, honestly. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, another whistleblower. Be careful. Yeah, no, the whole thing with uh, Boeing is always really sketch. But let me add this. So another theory centers around the suspicious, suspicious timing of Lynch's disappearance just hours which is really weird, just hours after his former co-defendant, Stefan, died in a free car accident. Mm -hmm. Both men were involved in the same legal case and had recently been acquitted. Theories speculate that the deaths were linked and orchestrated, orchestrated by the same entities who wanted to eliminate any loose ends after the trial. Some theories suggest that the deaths were staged to look like accidents, but were in, face, were in fact planned eliminations. I mean, this is exactly what the mob has done for so, <laughs> so long. Watch any mob movie, and this is what happens. If you talk, you, you get, you know? The best way I can put it is that there's no conspiracies, but there's just no coincidences. There's no coincidences. <laughs> I, 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 look, what are the chances that two people involved in the same thing die in freak accidents just, what, like... Uh, a week apart or something like that no not even a week hours 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 apart so one was involved in a free car uh, accident and died right so what are the chances mm -hmm. of that and then this motherfucker died by a water spout <laughs> and it capsized the ship and seven or ten people died and like nine or ten survived like it was a big do you yacht, know how hard is yacht. it to capsize a super yacht a super yacht like those things are made good oh my god so how do you capsize a super yacht I mean, you know how much water displacement you need to, to capsize a boat like that a yacht like that so, like okay so we have the airplane with the cancer scientists going yep. down a few weeks ago now we have this guy like 
a lot of spooky stuff going on. A lot, a lot of weird stuff. And the more technology people, the more ways people have to eliminate someone, the scarier it gets. Mm. You know, the mob had guns and they had ropes and they had knives. Yeah. These people have satellites that can do some things. And we don't even know the, the extent of the capability of that of what they can do. Uh, but we also have, again, you know, just regular old sabotage. You know, I, I, I don't know if we found the wreckage. I mean, it couldn't be that that deep or how hard it would be to pull that thing out. But uh, it'd be interesting once you get some divers under there and people under there. And who knows, maybe CNN will stop talking about it by then because it'll be after the election. Who knows, right? I think that's part of the plan as always. Uh, always. Always. What do uh, you say, Fabian? Do we wrap it up? I think we wrap it up. We've gone, uh, we've gone to, to, from the ocean to space and to the virtual world. So I think we pretty much wrapped all dimensions up for the, for the listeners. Multi-dimension uh, podcast like that. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Please share this with your friends. Please make sure you subscribe and you follow us everywhere. David Kate is David underscore Kate. I am Fabian L-U-X-E, Fabian Lux. Add me on uh, or Twitter, Fabian underscore 1776. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.